I've spent years building the same interactions over and over again. The kind of stuff that's too custom to have in your base style guide, but also common enough that it shows up project after project. That's why I'm excited to announce the release of my component library for Webflow called Modin. Modin works with any Webflow project in any framework, and you can copy pre-built interactions and layouts that are minimally styled so they adapt to the styles of your project. I've already started using this in client work and it's allowed me to move so much faster while building cooler things because I'm not starting from scratch each time. We can give components a custom name before copying them into our project. We can check out any static versions of them, CMS versions, and once we go ahead and just paste them in our project, we'll notice we have the code here. We can leave the CSS and JavaScript in the component if we'd like, or we can move the JavaScript over to site settings. If we already have libraries like GSAP or scroll trigger and import it in our site, we can go ahead and take those out and we can just toggle them on from here if needed. Now from here, we can go ahead and preview and we'll notice we have this interaction set up and good to go for our project. When you sign up for Modin, your price is locked in for the duration of your membership. So even with any future price increases, your rate will be locked in for as long as you're a member. Now to use Modin, we can filter and search for different component types. I can use my up and down arrow keys to cycle through components and press command Command C to copy and enter to open that component. I can filter by the type of resource this is, the type of component it is, and the tools that were used to make it. And I can press Command K to clear my search and focus into that search bar to search for something new. So to look at some examples, here we have a fetch modal, meaning when we open this modal here, it's actually pulling this content from the CMS page and bringing it over to the current page. So we never actually left the page we were on, but it's updating the slug to be the slug of that CMS item. So if we copy this link and send it to someone, they'll be sent to the CMS items page. We can also use our browser back button. And again, it's updating that slug. So we can reopen the previous item that we had here or go forward again and open this current one here. And if we refresh our page here, we'll land on the CMS page for that item. To look at one more example, here we have this parallax image slider connected to Swiper. So I can drag or scroll and these images are kind of coming down at an angle. Now, the way that this works is it's connected to a timeline. So for each item here, we're going to move that item, pull it up by negative 40%. And when it reaches the center of the screen, it'll have no transform. And then when it goes towards the left of the screen, it'll be pushed down by 40%. So that's what's making it come down on that angle. Now, if we want it to make more of a circle, we can actually uh, pull it up on both ends and just have it uh, at its default spot in the center of the screen. And for opacity here, we can also answer animate from lower opacity to full opacity when that item reaches the center of the screen. And the more extreme our ease is here, that means that the items are going to be darker on the edges more and only reach full opacity when they're really close to the center of the screen. So I'm using an out ease for this and an in ease for this. And then the images inside each item are moving from a negative transform to zero when they're at the center of the screen. And then they're moving to a positive transform once they reach the left. So that's what's creating that parallax. We could also animate scale, we could animate rotation, or anything else we want to animate for this sort of sequence here. And that same sequence is being used for this vertical version of a marquee. So whether it's a horizontal scroll, or we're moving elements with a slider or tied to our mouse move, we can animate their progress based off their vertical or horizontal position within a parent. So here when this item reaches uh, the center of the screen, or the center of its parent, it's going to have uh, no transform right here. And then when it reaches the top or the bottom, that's when it's being pushed over uh, to the left. So we can make this make a circle, make a straight line, or animate them uh, however we want. Now, these components all have their secret sauce built in. So normally for like a hover interaction that's JavaScript powered, if we had it inside of a looped slider or a filtered grid, it wouldn't work with a lot of our items because it only runs on the, the items that were initially there. But for interactions like this, it works even with any new items that are added to the page later without us having to do anything special. So there's just little things like that that uh, make the quality of life uh, so much nicer. Um, same for this, like instead of us having that large logo, it, 
reroute the entire designer, we're running uh, some code that makes it look normal in designer view um, so that things don't look uh, blown out of proportion until the JavaScript is enabled. So there's little things like that thought through for all of the components that make them so much fun to work with. So I'm really excited for you to try Modin out and go through these components.